So it's January 1st, 2013, and we're now in Dunedin, Florida. It was this time last year where I injured my back in the West Indies and risked almost losing the sailboat and everything on it. And I realized that maintaining personal fitness on a boat when you're traveling around is a requirement. It's not optional. The thing is that maintaining fitness on a small boat is a real challenge because there's limited space. It's like you're in a major earthquake zone all the time and there aren't that much resources out there to help us. So that's what this video is all about. First I'll share with you some general fitness techniques that are worth researching further. Next I'll share with you some equipment that's simple, basic, easy to store and maximize your options. Then I will show you some simple boat modifications that are worth doing to help increase what you can do. And finally I'll share with you some specific examples that I use on this sailboat that work for me. So thank you Frank Huron for first mentioning to me about P90X. And thanks Barbara Snyder for showing me and proving to me that P90X is awesome. Um, P90X is basically a core body workout. It's anaerobic and aerobic. That means it works, you can work your muscles and you work your heart. Um, it doesn't require a lot of equipment and the kind of things that you know they do in P90X can be easily modified to fit your circumstances on your boat. Sandy Kiptez and Chrissy Brewster, thank you for telling me about yoga and you made me go and research it more. Um, yoga is basically an excellent way for flexibility, posture, range of motion and more. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of equipment and actually you guys got me to get this book. I'll give you more information about this book a little bit later but this gal who wrote this book talks about you know asymmetric postures and symmetrical postures and, and it got me thinking about other things like you anyone thinks about push-ups and basic sit-ups you think of them as being symmetrical but really on a boat they're not um, because the boat may be healing over this way at one time healing over this way another time so really whenever you do um, moves or motions that anyone tells you you have to do them both ways like with your head forward or your head backward or your head to the port or your head to the starboard um, because there's no such thing as a symmetrical motion or a symmetrical exercise when you're on a boat. So thanks Dave Wagner for telling me about Body Rock TV. Um, go to YouTube and search for Body Rock, Body Rock TV workouts and once you get over looking at the girls and you start listening to them and seeing what they're doing it's amazing. They have excellent aerobic exercises and cool ideas that you can definitely modify to do on your boat. Um, the thing is there's lots of repetitions because it's aerobic and you know there's other exercises that you might be able to do and it brings to mind counting. Counting can be a challenge. For me I have a hard time counting over 10. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll count and maybe to every time I count to 10 I'll stick a finger out. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 30. Then I can work my way to 100. Sometimes I'm smart enough, 200. Another option is you should have like a little egg timer anyway for night passages and lookouts. So you could set this for one minute, three minute, 10 minutes, and then do your aerobics. Um, Body Rock TV and knowing how to count um, or time yourself is high value. Hefe Smith, thanks for pointing me to exrx.net. That is an awesome website. Check it out. They have tons of information on there and a lot of anaerobic exercises. That's just pure muscle, not much heart. But basically, pick a muscle, pick something you want to improve because it's too weak or whatever, and you can find that on exrx.net. It's mostly, I think, for personal trainers or something but man there's tons of resources on there check it out and go to the um, 
you know, the biggest link I remember is the exercise directory and um, navigate down through there. Um, Kate Catlow, thank you a bunch for a lot of super, um, you know, you told me about Pilates and, you know, there's not, Pilates may want some more equipment, but the whole idea, that guy's an inspiration. And then, um, you know, some great exercise band ideas, using them isometrically. Awesome. Thanks a bunch. No space, no stable footing. We're out of luck. Actually, that's incorrect. That's naive thinking. So the first thing that I had to get through my mind was Dale Carnegie, turn lemons into lemonade. That's the way we got to think. We got to figure out how to turn these challenges into positives. And, you know, remember other people like Joe Pilates, for example. He was stuck in a prisoner of war camp, I think, during most, if not all, of World War II. And I'll bet you, by the time he got out of there, he was more fit than any of us. Even considering the lack of equipment and sucky situation that must have been. So, um, if he can do it, we can do it. So, consider some of the thoughts that these key fitness innovators advise us. Like um, the P90X guy talks about muscle confusion. Well, how can you better confuse your mus muscles doing a push-up on a rocking boat compared to on a stable, you know, gym in, at land? Um, Jack Lane, the godfather of fitness, talked about changing around the rut your routine every few weeks. Well, sometimes you're going to be bashing into waves going to windward. Other, uh, other times you're going to be kicking back in a calm anchorage. So basically, these different techniques that I just mentioned, and well, I'll show you some examples in a bit, but you might use some sometimes, others on other times. Just the fact that you're in a, a changing environment, if you change your routines to accommodate that environment, um, you're doing what they're saying is the best thing to do. So it's like win-win. So you can be stronger now on the boat than you were on land. I think the key thing to realize is everything is good, but doing nothing is bad. And when you're doing things, concentrate on what you're doing, think about what you're doing, breathe right with the motions. And, you know, if you're thinking about what you're doing, then you're going to be stronger, you're going to have better form and motion, and you're less likely to get injured. So let's talk about some bits of equipment. Here's one thing. I got a bunch of dowels with the boat anyway to clean out the scuppers or through holes. And you could use a gaff or a boat hook, but something that you can brace against like a countertop that you can do exercises with. Another thing that will help, a pad, any basic little pad that you can help put under your hip or your arms for doing something. It doesn't have to be big, just something small enough or big enough to, to keep bone off of some hard surface like the floor. Another high value things are these bands. So what we got here on the Sogging Witch are black bands, which are pretty high resistance and then red which are pretty low resistance and the thing is I've got these set up so like this one is double this guy here is single that could also be maybe turned into quadruple and the same goes with the red you know there's double there's a single they could be quadruple so at the end result, and you can mix and match, mix black with red, and you have a huge variety of resistance levels to train with. Okay, here we are looking the other way, and I have some ties. They're tied all the way around, so they're solid, not going anywhere. Foot level, hip level, and as high as I could get in the cabin. You can put the elastic bands through here to get some resistance exercises through. And at these, you know, between these three levels, you're pretty well set. Okay, here we are out on deck, and you see some 
ladder rungs. So I have two ladder rungs on the shrouds that I can use to do pull-ups. Any sailboat's got shrouds and you can do pull-ups on them. It's just with a basic pressing knot. The same kind of knot that, well they're popular with, with climbers, not too popular with sailors for some crazy reason, but um, it keeps the rope from sliding down. Okay, written down here are the resources that I just went over. There's P90X. I don't know the guy's name, but if you just Google P90X, I'm sure you'll find it. And um, it's worth it. Go to YouTube.com and search for Body Rock TV Workouts. And you'll see some of the best aerobic workout ideas that you can do in a small space. Um, EXRX.net awesome resource. Um, the exercise directory is a link worth checking out. Um, the ladder rungs were tied on with a prussic knot. So Google prussic knot and you'll see that knot. I say next to the bowline it's the second best knot you'll find on a boat that you never see on a boat. <laughs> yeah, there's also that yoga book. It's yoga for boaters. Balance, breath, and breeze by, who's it by? Beverly James and Christina Ellis. One of them is a boater and the other is a yoga instructor. I think that's it. Beverly's a boater and Christina's the uh, yoga gal. Um, but anyway, more good ideas. So before I move on to some examples, I have to say that the single best resource is actually your imagination. Because none of these guys are going to say anything that perfectly fits you, your body, and your situation. Um, they just have good ideas. And think of it that way. And then you got to build on it so that you end up doing things that you like to do and that make you feel good. Um, that's like job number, that's the job. Think of that as your job when you look through these resources. And like I've set things up on this boat to do mostly down below. I mean that way, the way I think about it is I don't have to worry about it if it's raining or snowing outside and you know, heck, the people around me think I'm crazy anyway, but if they see me doing crazy stuff, oddball things on the deck, then they'll just know I'm crazy. So this way I don't have to worry about it. Alright, let's move on to some examples and then we'll close up. Thank you. 
Okay, so like anything else, attitude is everything. So, for, for some finishing thoughts, let me just share with you um, about my old friend Dan Christensen. We used to live together in Michigan, and in the wintertime, he would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning before work and go run a half a marathon over the icy roads and snow. It would be hard to breathe because the air would freeze when it hits your lungs. And he would, on the weekends, he would go and enter some running race somewhere and win it to use the winning money to buy more shoes. So, and Dan would always say, you know, it's, it may take some genetics to win the Olympics, to be an Olympic winner, but to, run the, to win these races, all it just takes is some hard work. So when you're training, you just got to work hard at it. And, um, well, you know, I'm a, being of a more simple mind, I like to think of Matt Carpenter. He used to say, when you're running, if you can talk, you're not working out hard enough. So that's it. Good luck on your fitness and keep feeling good.